So in this video, you're going to learn how to use WebSocket with Flutterflow. WebSocket is one of the most important part of building application because it enables real timeness. Using WebSocket, you won't have to rely on Firebase, which is very expensive when you start getting users. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use WebSocket in Flutterflow, bullshit free, straight to the point. To be able to create a WebSocket service, you have to have a WebSocket server running somewhere and the easiest way to get that up and running is by using a service like PyHost and it easily integrates into something like Flutterflow because you don't have to create any manual codes. All you have to do is create an instance with them and start sending events from your Flutterflow application. So to start using all the service, so just attempt signing up. I already have an account. I'm going to go through the sign up stage. So because I had already signed up, I'm going to attempt sign up with another email account. So now I've already done the sign up, now it's time to sign in. So now I have to verify my email address. So I have already done that off camera, it is a simple process. So all I have to do now is hit reload. So now I can complete my setup by filling some default information. Now that all has been configured and fully set up, it's now time to create my WebSocket service. So to create my WebSocket service, all I have to do is click on create and I, I have multiple options to create from. So what I'm going to create from is I'm going to create a Pi socket. So I'll click on this Pi socket. And now because I'm only attempting this for free, so I'll just click on free and I can only do free in this region. In this Bangalore India region. So let me enter the name of my cluster, which is going to be Flutter Flow Demo. That's all. Then I can now create. So I can now create cluster. So you can see the cluster is done creating. So I should get a URL for connection for WebSocket connection. So now I can click on Test Online. And this is my WebSocket connection string. So you can see I can connect and the connection will be done. So you can see connection established. So this is what we are going to be using to make connection on our Flutterflow application. So let me disconnect and have this copied. So we can fully test out the capabilities of the WebSocket here in this box. And the way to do that is by using the send button. You can see this test editor to actually put in a test and broadcast it to all connected sockets. So make it in send. Will bro you can see it's sent. And this um, down arrow key or button or icon means this broadcasted message is coming back to this connected string. So here I'm sending a test. Hello Pi socket, but in Flutterflow we won't be able to send something like this because Flutterflow won't be able to handle it. We need to send something that Flutterflow can recognize and will be able to handle properly. And to send something like that, we have to send a JSON data format. So a JSON data format is just something that you can the structure in Flutterflow that you can use to display or to use wherever it is that you've sent using the socket. The simple way to do that is just by creating this curly brace bracket. Then you have um, your string, which is like test wrapped in double quotes. Then, so it's, it's going to be in key value on pair. So the key is going to be the title, while the value is going to be um, the content of the title. So I can say um, Vaiku, so which is like the key then I can say uh, maybe a Tesla. So the value of this is going to be a Tesla. So once I've done this, I can hit send and this will broadcast it to all the connected sockets. So working with PyOS is as simple as this. Now over to Flutterflow where we'll be able to use um, what you've created here. So now that we are done getting a web sockets URL from PyOS is now time to plug that into our Flutter flow to make a very basic application. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to demonstrate how to go by it step by step so that you can do the same whenever it is that you want to um, integrate WebSocket into your application. 
so I'm going to sign in now so now all I have to do is create a new project so I'm going to create a blank project I'm going to say WebSocket test so I'm going to skip all this so now we have a basic page so the first thing to do if you want to work with WebSocket is to come in here to come to the app state now we're going to have some app state so first off what we're going to build is a to-do app and it's going to be a real-time one so we we'll have ability to add to do's and ability to also add it from the web socket in real time so i'm going to add few states that is going to denote what this application is all about so to add a new state click on this button then i'm going to have is web socket open then this is going to be a boolean which is like um, a draw for something so let me have this like this and this is all for this then I'm going to have another state this state is going to denote the the to do app state so it's going to be the to do app um, state list and everything so and this is how I'm going to do it so it's going to be list of to do's then it's going to be of type JSON then it's going to be a list then it's going to persist so the reason it's going to be persisted is because um, if I start the application I want my to do to still be on the app so I'm going to click on create and that is all for this app state now let's go to the builder itself let's drag in some few things so I'm going to drag in an input box so I'm going to dra drag in a test field now I'm going to drag in a button as well so I'm going to drag in a button then I'm also going to drag in a column and this is where all our to do's are going to be so then I'm going to drag in a list field or a list view so inside this list view I'm going to drag in a test and that's all Boom. okay let me give this some padding so let's configure this to work with the state and to do that is simple let's click on this so let me edit this into to do that's all so this button when it has been clicked what do I want to do I want to come here I want to go to state management click on update app state then add field so you can see I have a bunch of field I can actually add so let me click on this next thing is to click on update type and we will be selecting add to list because we are adding to a list of to do's and next thing is to add the variable because we are adding json it's a list of json we have to create a json map then we have to define the map types which are going to be strings for the key type and string for the value type as well the next thing is to add map entry the map entry contains a key value pair and the title of our key is going to be name why the value is going to come from the test field so and the way to do that is by clicking on widget state then selecting the to do test field and that will be all for making the button add what has been typed into the test field into the list so now since we now have the ability to add a new state so the next thing to do is to put whatever i've added here into this list view and the easiest way to do that is by coming here i'll click on this so i can have a better view of everything on the page so i'll come to this list view then i would generate children from variable and i'll enter the variable name here which is list of to do then I'll have to set my value. To set my value, I'll have to come to this app state and I'll click on this list of to dos. So now it's confirmed. So save. So this widget we now generate its children dynamically from the specified variable. That's all we want. So I'm going to hit OK. So you can see now this has been automatically generated. All I have to do is to use the value in this list view and this test. And to do that is very simple so I'll come here I'll click on this option then 
I would click on list of to do items so each and every iteration what is in that iteration will be in here and that's what I want so available option so I'll click on JSON part so you can see available option and this will be on the test um, widget so available option I'll click on JSON part and what I have to do is to add dot name and the reason I'm adding dot name is, is because name is my key for the JSON map that I created so I'll hit confirm and that is all for that so if I'm to test this out it will work the way it should now all we have to do now is to add the WebSocket side of things so we will be able to like fully test out this demo project adding WebSocket to Flutterflow would not have been possible without the addition of custom codes to Flutterflow and to do that all I have to do is to come to custom codes tab now I have the ability to add custom action so now I'll add custom action so it's going to be custom action so now you can see that some of this has been automatically generated for us all we now have to do is to input our codes to save time from me typing out foreign codes I'm just going to copy and paste the code that I've written and I'm going to attach um, the code to this video description so that you can go and copy it and possibly use it in your Flutterflow application but I'm going to explain how it works step by step so the first thing we need is we need to add a dependency that will allow us to use WebSocket client so and the name of the dependency is also WebSocket client so now I'm going to add that in here so I'm going to click on add dependency and I'm going to put that in here so I've copied the codes so I'll paste it in and I'll try to explain what's going on so here is the code to explain what's going on I have made an import of the WebSocket client which I'm going to be using all over the code I am declaring the WebSocket variable then the WebSocket string I've copied it from this PyOS then I've put it here then I'm doing the connection I'm listening for the connection event and in here I'm listening for the connection message so once the message comes in because it's a JSON we have to decode it into something Flutterflow can understand and this entire thing is that code because Flutterflow uses Flutter in the background which in turn uses that programming language and the most important part of this code is this Flutter app state this Flutter app state gives us direct access to the state we've declared here to the app state we've declared here so that we'll be able to use it in our codes so that is very important and and this update method allows us to update this in real time because this is an app state without doing this the changes will be in the data but it won't reflect on the ui screen and that's all about the code now let's save this action i'm going to save it websocket so now since it has been saved as websocket i would save the action so now you see this error parameter in the settings don't match parameter in the code editor so to fix this issue we have to check our codes and make sure that the signature matches so to fix this issue you have to add in the extra parameters that you have in this action which is is open so to add that argument we have to click on this add argument and type in is open this is no open is going to be the name and this is a boolean so we have to put that in here just uncheck this then that will be how that will fix the issue so you can see the save has been done and this action has been registered here so to make use of the action let's go back to our builder click on this as usual go to home page so you go to the root of this page then you click on add action so on action you open action flow editor and what do we want to add we want to add a custom action so and the name of the custom action is websocket so what will be the custom action parameter the custom action parameter is going to be a boolean just like we have specified and it's going to be true so once that is done that's all we need to do to make sure that the custom action runs properly the way it should in our code now let's run the test now the page has fully loaded and we have some debug panel to actually see um, how or what is going on in our application the first thing you will notice is this is websocket open so you can see that the default for the is websocket state is false but because the code works it's now true so that actually tells us that the websocket connection has been made successfully 
now to test this out so i'm going to add some things here i'm going to add go so i'm going to add man so you can see this is coming directly from entering a test here and clicking this button so now let's test the websocket part of it to make sure that if maybe another person posted it on another maybe on another instance of this application will it get up updated here so that's what we're trying to um, check for now so if I come here now to test for this now anything I type in here must reflect on this page because we are using websockets and it is real time so to do this let me connect here and the messaging will be sent it will send data in this format name and let me say oh so if I'm to send this O should actually display on our flutter flow application and the reason I'm sending name here is because that is what we've specified that we want on flutter flow if you send anything apart from this data format it is going to break the application and it is not going to work so let me send this so you can see that I've sent this out and this has been um, published by this PIO service so if I'm to come here now you should see O so you can see that this is working so let me put in YouTube so same thing so this is how to work with WebSocket connection in Flutterflow and the application to WebSocket is so so wide you don't need to depend on Firebase to do anything real time again in, in your Flutterflow application the conclusion is that choose a no code tool that is pretty much extensible using codes and Flutterflow is the best for that. I'm kind of advocating for them because that's what I kind of use. And if you're looking for SPACT that works with Flutterflow, Dart, and Flutter programming language, um, reach out to us at Datasly Tech.